Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed, and don't forget to download the PDF down in the description below so that you can follow along. It's this exact document here so that you can make your own notes, save this for later, share it with your, your best friends. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. This is a really fun ECG, so I'm super excited. Um, all right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the forest, and the trees of the forest are my QRS complexes, right? So I might come down here to say bleed, to QRS seems a little funky, right? If I zoom in really close, yeah, you know, maybe it's a little bit on the wide side, right? Maybe if you come here to V1, you can see it a little bit better, right? So we've got a wide complex rhythm, and that comp that wide complex rhythm is fast. It appears to be quite fast, and you can tell that it's kind of that regular fast the entire time. My rate is if I start here at a solid line, 300, 150, that would be 100. So closer to 150, I would call this maybe 140 beats per minute, right? You could do a real, uh, you know, more precise calculation if you'd like, but I think this is appropriate. <clears throat> so, you know, we've got this wide complex tachycardia. What do we think it's, what do you think's going on? We need to kind of work through it. I look in front of my QRS complexes and it appears I've got P waves, so I'm like, okay, before I proceed, if I think this is a tachycardia that has to do with some type of, you know, atrial or, or sinus tachycardia, it's coming from higher than the AV node, if it's a wide complex rhythm, let me just go ahead and make sure that the morphology of this QRS is in line with some type of aberrancy, either a right or a left bundle branch block. And if you look closely, right, if you come up here to V1, you see that we've got this RSR prime, that's an R s r prime right and so we know that r s r prime <coughs> excuse me r s r prime is really a feature of right bundle branch blocks right and we know that right bundle branch blocks you'll also see some lateral deep s waves right these kind of slurry s waves in the lateral leads leads one in avl and you can see them over here kind of a little bit of a slurred S wave, right? And so we've got a right bundle branch block morphology in the setting of a regular complex tachycardia, right? And we've got P waves in this tachycardia, and let's go through our algorithm now. What about those P waves? Well, those P waves are upright in lead one, and they're upright in AVF. So these are, in fact, sinus P waves. So we've got a sinus tachycardia, well, how's my AV node doing, right? The next thing in my uh, um, kind of algorithm here is to measure my intervals and my PR intervals representing my AV node function. And so, you know, we need to find a, a, a lead that's got kind of flatter T waves and sharper P waves. I really like V1 for this. So if you look closely, you can see the beginning of my P wave is maybe right here. The beginning of my QRS is here. And so my PR interval is in between 120 to 200 milliseconds, which is normal. Now let's scan through the rhythm and make sure that all of those PR intervals remain that way, and they do. I don't see any dropped beats, which would make me think that the AV node didn't conduct, uh, and so that makes me happy. Next thing we do is evaluate our QRS. We said that we think we have a right bundle branch block, and so we can look at our axis. Our axis is negative in lead one. It's positive in AVF. That tells me it's going down, but away from lead one, so somewhere in this quadrant. So we've got evidence of right axis deviation. Okay, so we've got some right axis deviation. Uh, it's it's not significant in the sense that, you know, lead one is just a little bit more negative than it is positive. So a little bit of right axis deviation. And um, in the setting of uh, maybe a right bundle branch block. Yeah, sure, we could probably expect that, but we'll continue to evaluate why we have right axis deviation. There could be other causes. And so um, we're going to look quickly at our QT intervals. We can maybe find a couple of R to R's, right? We see that the T wave seems to be kind of terminated by the midpoint, so I'm happy with my QT at this point. And so when you see somebody who's got you know, a tachycardia, you know, your thought is, well, why are they tachycardic? You know, this is a physiological response to some stressor, 
Right, so you always want to evaluate for ischemia and infarctions in these folks. And so pathological cues are going to tell you about previous infarctions. ST and T wave changes are going to tell you about acute ischemia or infarctions. And so this is where the plot kind of thickens with this ECG. Is notice I have some pretty significant ST segment elevation in V2, V3, and V4. My anterior leads. I zoom in here. Here's my baseline. Here's my baseline. There's my ST segment. Right? You see that baseline ST segment. So we've got greater than two millimeters there. Same with V3. Here's my baseline ST segment. V4 baseline ST segment. So we have ST segment elevation in the anterior leads, right? And so my eyes need to shift somewhere else. Well, do I have any other changes that could be reciprocal changes? Or um, are there any other areas of the myocardium that could be infarcting as well? And so then you can see we've actually kind of got these Q waves in the lateral leads with just a hair of elevation as well. A little bit of elevation in my lateral leads with some Q waves. Same thing in lead one. You can see in lead one, here's my baseline. ST is a little bit elevated, and you can see we're even developing some of these Q waves, right? And so um, sometimes whenever you see these ST segments, right, you want to look for maybe some um, reciprocal depression. Maybe have a little bit of that here as my baseline. Here's some maybe depression in lead three, right? Here's my baseline, some depression in lead three, perhaps. And so what's going on with this patient? Well, it looks like they're having an anterior ST segment elevation myocardial infarction with maybe some lateral involvement with lead one and AVL. Okay. And so maybe that explains a little bit of our right axis deviation, right? Because if our anterior portion of the myocardium is unable to conduct tissue, well, we're going to see tissue rather be conducted away from that region, right? And so we get some right axis deviation. And so what do we have? We'll put this all together. Well, we've got a sinus tachycardia at a rate of 140 beats per minute. We have a right bundle branch block and right axis deviation that might be explained by ST segment elevation in the anterior leads V2, V3, V4, suggesting anterior infarction actively, as well as perhaps some lateral involvement with some lesser, to a lesser degree, ST segment changes in lead one and AVL. Maybe plus or minus some reciprocal depression in lead three. So I hope this helps you kind of evaluate uh, ischemic and infarcted changes, right? This is in the setting of a bundle branch block. We know historically that bundle branch blocks create, you know, changes in the way that our T waves are oriented, right? It usually causes some type of inverted T wave in those leads that are represented. So um, this is a little bit of a different uh, look for ST segments um, based on the aberrant conduction that already exists in this myocardium with the right bundle branch. Um, but, you know, you never know. This patient's right bundle branch might be getting a couple, little bit of blood supply from that. Uh, maybe the left anterior descending that's supplying some of this anterior myocardium, right? And so because we know that the LAD is the likely culprit in these settings, and the LAD supplies some of the interventricular septum, well, if some of those right bundle branch fibers are also in the interventricular septum passing through on their way down to the uh, right, right ventricle, then, well, we might have some you know, a new evolving right bundle branch block. So everything kind of in context, right? We'll look at previous ECGs and make good clinical decision making. So hope this helps. Leave your comments down below with any questions. And uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next ECG. Have a great day.